Okay, this is part two of our lesson on rational expressions, equations, inequalities, etc. Um, this was a test that we had on a unit about uh, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, rational expressions like these, inequalities. Um, so this will be a good review for you, but if you have not watched part one, you're going to want to go back and watch that first and uh, pick up uh, with us here on number eight. All right, so here comes an inequality. We handle those a little bit differently than equations. We need zero on one side, so if I subtract three from both sides, I have two x minus seven over x minus five minus three is less than or equal to zero. Now I can't multiply through by x minus five like I would if this was an equation. Instead, I need like denominators so I can put this together in one fraction. So like denominators, you say. Yes, that is what I say. So I'm going to put a denominator of x minus five to make it be like that. I can't just do that without doing it to the numerator as well. Please understand this is a negative three. When you distribute this, do not distribute a three. Distribute a negative three. This will be positive 15 once you distribute. Did I emphasize that enough? Okay, so um, when I put these together over my brand new like denominator, uh, this stays what it is, 2x minus 7. But this negative 3 distributes, and I have negative 3x plus 15. Uh, combining some like terms here, so that'll be negative x plus 8. Okay, just combining these like terms over x minus 5. Okay, um, and all of this is less than or equal to 0. So this is what we're going to be dealing with from now on. Okay, so we need to talk about the critical value so I can make my number line. Um, I am talking about the zeros, for one thing, which comes from the numerator. The numerator can't be zero. Um, so, well, no, I strike that. It's not that the numerator can't be zero. If the function were equal to zero, that would mean the numerator was zero. So, negative x plus eight equals zero. It's the only way the function can equal zero. So this will give me negative x is equal to negative 8, x is equal to positive 8. So that's the zero of the function. Um, I will also need the excluded values, which come from the denominator. Okay, x minus 5 cannot equal 0, x cannot equal 5. So these are my excluded values, 5 and 8. All right, so I am going to use these two values to break up my number line, 5 and, and 8. So here it comes. All right, so here's my number line. And let's say here's 5 and here is 8. All right, now when I do this, um, looking for what color I should use. I'll just do this. Um, I like to pick test values or I could use the graph. Alright, in this interval to the left of 5 I'm going to test out the value of the function at 4. And on this side I'm going to try the value of the function at 6. Or I could have used 7 just as easily. And over here, I'll use the value of the function at 9. I'm just pa picking a value from each zone. Okay, so um, let's look at the function at 4. So um, I'm using this version of the function, negative x plus 8 over blah, blah, blah. So table, clear, fraction. Okay, um, so what did I say? Negative x plus 8 over some stuff. x minus 5.
Okay, let's check it out. Um, I'm checking out the value of the function at 4, so let's start with making this be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. At 4, we have negative 4, okay? So hold that in your brain. Now, we want the function to be less than or equal to 0, so we ask ourselves, is negative 4 less than or equal to 0? And the answer is yes, it's negative, so that's cool. Um, what about 6? All right, at 6, the function has a value of 2. So is 2 less than or equal to 0? No, 2 is positive. What about 9? Got to scroll down a bit for that one. 9, the function is negative 1 fourth. Is negative 1 fourth less than or equal to zero. Why, yes it is. It's a negative number. So the yeses show us where the solutions are. Um, now, before we get too carried away, these uh, values at five and eight, should I graph them as open circles or closed circles? Probably should have done this in the first place. Um, well, excluded values are always open circles because open circles mean excluded. So at uh, 5 it will definitely be an open circle. Alright, excluded values are always open circles. Now the zeros, um, that depends. Alright, the zeros tell you when the value of the function is zero. So the question is do we want to include zero? Well look at this symbol right here. We want to know where the function is less than or equal to zero. So because of that equal to, we want to include zero, so we will do that by making this a closed circle. Now, um, the yes shows us where the solutions are. So we have solutions here, and there's a yes here, so that means all of these are solutions. So there's my graph. And now it's time for some nice interval notation. So negative infinity uh, to 5. We'll start off with that. Negative infinity to 5. Round parenthesis because it's an open circle, not included. And since I have a whole other branch coming, I'll have to say union. And now this part is uh, 8 to infinity. And I will have to do bracket 8 to infinity bracket because the 8 is to be included. Okay, so there is the answer to number 8. Alright, for 9 and 10 we are simply stating the excluded value. So we definitely need to factor everything. Um, so this denominator factors as x plus 4, x minus 4. Okay, the excluded values are only going to come from the denominator because the denominator can't be zero, can't divide by zero. So um, because of this, x cannot equal negative four, and because of this factor, x cannot equal positive four. So that's pretty simple. All right, so x cannot equal negative four, x cannot equal positive four. All right, that's really all there is to that. Um, Similarly, it really doesn't even matter what we do with the numerator, uh, but we need to factor the denominator to see what x cannot be. x squared is x times x. 21, I'm thinking 3 times 7. Positive 3, negative 7. Or we need a middle of negative 4. That would do it. Positive times negative is a negative, so there we factored it. And the way I'm getting these... Um, excluded values, the denominator can't be zero. So that means x plus 3 cannot equal 0 and x minus 7 cannot equal 0. So subtracting 3 from both sides tells us that x cannot equal negative 3. Adding 7 on both sides tells us x cannot equal 7. Okay, so that's how you do that. All right, let's solve some equations. Um, when we're solving inequations, not inequalities, we can multiply through by 
whatever it takes to cancel out the denominator, all right, the least common multiple. Um, so some of you can just do this mentally and see that um, the thing to multiply by is 15x, all right? We, uh, we need 15. 15 will cancel out the 15, obviously, but also 5 divides evenly into 15. And we need an x to cancel out the x. So we need to multiply everything by 15x. Okay, um, if you needed a little bit more breakdown for like how I'm getting the 15x, if you don't automatically see, oh yeah, clearly 15x is the smallest thing that will cancel out all the denominators. Then for you, you have to look at it this way. Um, look at each denominator separately. So I've got 5x, I've got, uh, let me see if I can color code this. So I've got 15, and then I've got x. All right, those are my three denominators. Okay, we need to make these all be the same thing. Um, and all we can do to change them is multiply. So um, one thing though, so I've got the 5x, that's great. That's already prime factorization. The, uh, the 15 though, um, that's not prime. 15 is three times five, okay? And the x is already prime. There's nothing, you can't break that down any further. So, um, you can look at it this way. I need to make all three of these the same by multiplying them by whatever I want. Um, so, let's see. I see a three there, prime number. Everything has to have a prime number of three. So, I need to give this a three, and I need to give this a three. I better leave space. I need to give this a three. All right, the blue and the purple all have fives. So that means the uh, pink needs a factor of five as well. Okay, the blue and the pink both have x's. That means the purple needs a factor of x. Now all three of them are three times five times x, three times five times x, three times five times x. So each of these are the thing I need to multiply by, specifically 15x. So if you can just glance at it and see, oh, 15x will cancel out all the denominators the most efficiently. Great, just use your brain. If you need some sort of a system to just follow, it's going to be a little bit more complicated for you, but maybe you, if you can understand that, you have a that gives you a shot at it. Okay, um, so I'm talking too much now. So we're multiplying everything by 15x. Now look, the um, the x's are definitely going to cancel out here, right? X and x, they cancel out. Now 5 goes into 15 three times. So there's that. Okay, this 15 and this 15 are going to cancel out. This x and this x are going to cancel out. So here's what I have, people. Okay, everything canceled out, but I have 2 times 3, so that's 6 equals. Okay, the 15's canceled out, so I have negative 3x. The x's cancel out, so I have plus 15. This is very solvable. I will subtract 15 from both sides. So I have negative 3x is equal to negative 9. Okay, dividing both sides by negative 3. Oh, that was supposed to be green. Dividing both sides by negative 3. And that gives me positive 3. And we just have to uh, make sure that this is not a excluded value. Um, so as we take a look at the denominators, we see the only excluded value is that x cannot be 0. So three is totally fine. So that's the answer for number 11. All right, now number 12. Let's factor everything in the denominator so we can see what we need to multiply by. So I've got 5x minus 20. Even though there's a GCF there, 20, I really don't need to mess with that right now because um, it's just going to wind up combining like terms anyway. But the denominator, got to factor that stuff. So x squared 
is going to factor as x times x. 18, uh, I'm thinking 3 times 6, could have been 2 times 9, but I'm looking at a middle of negative 9x. If I have negative 3 and negative 6, that makes negative 9. Also, a negative times a negative is a positive, so we just factored that. Feeling like a genius. Okay, so um, got to factor this as well. X squared is X times X. Oh, wait, it's the same exact thing. Ha ha. So X minus 3, X minus 6. I'm just going to copy my previous wonderful work. Now I need to multiply through by any factors I see in the denominator. I see X minus 3. Got to multiply everything by X minus 3. I see X minus 6. And I got to do that too. All right, and there's nothing else in denominators other than x minus 3 and x minus 6. So I'm just going to do everything by that. OK, now it's time to cancel stuff out. So x minus 3, x minus 6, that's gone. x minus 6, that's gone x minus 3, x minus 6, all that's gone. Okay, so what does that leave? So I've got 5x minus 20 surviving plus x minus 3 equals x minus 4. That's what is surviving. Okay, like terms here. So 5x plus x, so I've got 6x, negative 20, negative 3. So negative 23 is equal to x minus 4. Um, anytime I see the variable on both sides, I move one of them over. So that's going to make 5x minus 23 is equal to negative 4. All right, time to add 23 to both sides. So that's going to make 5x is equal to um, 19. OK, so this is not going to come out evenly. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I'm going to get 19 fifths. which is the same thing as 3.8. All right, number 13. Mark is trying to simplify the following expression. x squared plus 25 over 2x plus 10. He says the first step of simplifying would be x plus 5 times x minus 5 over 2 times x plus 5. Sarah disagrees. Who is correct, Mark or Sarah? Explain. Well, x squared plus 25 is not factorable. Um, so factoring as x plus, plus 5 t times x minus 5, that would be true if you had x squared minus 25, OK, over 2x plus 10. So Sarah is right because x squared plus 25 is not factorable. Um, so that's it. All right, number 14 is one of those higher level thinking questions that we have to struggle with, like a puzzle. Create a rational expression which simplifies to this. OK, so some stuff cancels out. Um, the numerator factors as the difference of squares. And the denominator is a trinomial that also factors. OK, so difference of squares. So um, it has to simplify to x minus 7 
over x minus 3. Okay, if it's going to be the difference of squares, then it has to be like x minus 7, x plus 7. All right, that's how the difference of two squares factors. Um, the denominator has to be x plus 7 um, because these have to cancel out and just leave you with x minus 7, x minus 3. Luckily, they didn't give us anything real specific about the denominator. Um, it just has to be a trinomial that also factors. So using x plus 7 so that it will cancel out will work great. Um, so if we go ahead and uh, multiply this out, you'll see what we get. So um, of course, x plus 7, x minus 7, that's going to give you x squared minus 49. Okay, um, and you could double distribute if you wanted to, right? X times X uh, gives you X squared, and then X times 7 gives you 7X, all right? And then negative 7 times X gives you negative 7X, and negative 7 times positive 7 gives you negative 49. And then the negative 7 and the positive 7 cancel out, and you're left with X squared minus 49. You probably did not need to do all that, however, because you know how a difference of two squares works. x squared minus 49 would factor as x plus 7 times x minus 7. You just do it backwards. Um, but the bottom one, you might have had to double distribute. So once again, x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Putting together these like terms um, gives me x squared, uh, let's see, plus 4x minus 21. Okay, so this is the answer. And uh, that was the last problem in this lesson. So I hope this video has been helpful, and uh, I will see you on the next video.